My name is Diana Wall. I'm a professor in the Department of Anthropology at the City College of New York. Uh, my name is Nan Rothschild. I am a professor of anthropology uh, initially at Barnard and now at Columbia. My name is Herbert Signore and I've been with Senate Covid this project from the beginning. Seneca Village was a community that was really important and that nobody uh, remembers anymore. It was a community of African Americans who, by the criteria that we would apply to African Americans in that time period, were members of the middle class. Seneca Village is a village that was located in what is today Central Park. It was founded in the mid-1820s when some African Americans bought land and built their homes and institutions in uh, what became Seneca Village. Seneca Village was a significant African American settlement in New York City and its history dates back to 1820s, 2025, when property was first acquired by an African American. The village lasted until the 1850s when the land was taken from the people who lived there to create Central Park. In other words, this process is still going on today uh, where land is taken through the right of eminent domain. It was a period where the voting laws was changing in, this, in New York State. New York State had passed a law in 1820 saying that if you were black and you wanted to vote, you had to own land worth $250. The requirement for white males to vote was reduced and the requirement for African American males was increased to resident to the city for three years and owning property valued at $250. This land was about three miles north of where the rest of the city was, so the land was relatively inexpensive. We believe that the motivation for acquiring property in Seneca Village was to be enfranchised and be part of a political process. Um, the history of settlement goes up to 1850, 1855, when the city, through eminent domain, acquired the property. The people who owned land in the village were given compensation for their land, though of course they didn't think it was enough. But uh, people who were just renters, of course, got nothing, unfortunately. By the time the village was raised in the mid-1850s, almost 300, and peop uh, 300 people lived there. Two-thirds of them were of African descent, one-third European descent. Many of those who of European descent were Irish. Um, in addition to that, there were several institutions there, including three churches. AME Zion, All Angels, uh, African Union Church. The school, Colored School Number 3, that was located in the basement of African Union Church. Um, they, the churches bought the land to use for cemeteries because the rules had changed and the graveyards downtown were full, especially for African Americans. Um, so that there were multiple reasons why people started moving to Seneca Village. Looking at the birth and death records and church records, you can see the relationship between members of the community and how there were support networks built in. So it was a mixed community. It had these three churches and it had a school. It was laid out on the grid. It was a coherent, functional community. It's amazing how this settlement was survived in a city where there was so much against people who were African American. I mean, when I think of it, I think it must have been really nice, must have been a great experience to live there because if you were black uh, and you lived downtown, you faced uh, oppression and stigmatization every day. But up here, you know, around 86th Street, you were with fellows, with like-minded people, and I think it was probably a refuge. 